Pesticides are being used to ward off mosquitoes and help protect against the Zika virus. But could those chemicals be presenting their own health risks? Gael Gallardo reports. On the front lines in the fight against Zika, crews are double dosing chemicals to kill larvae and adult mosquitoes. People are being urged to use bug spray. That's a lot of chemical exposure. Right now is probably the better of two evils. Um, you know, I've been watching the, the news stories about the spread of Zika, and my sister is in her first trimester. So I do worry about her, and, um, you know, I do worry about the chemicals too, but I think in the, in the short term, you know, the bigger concern right now is just keeping her and her baby safe. Pediatrician Dr. David Berger agrees, pointing out there's so much we still don't know about the Zika virus. It's a devastating disease when a baby ends up microcephalic with most likely lifelong developmental delays. But Dr. Berger warns toxic accumulation is real and children are most susceptible. I will certainly have patients who are saying, hey, listen, I don't want to risk being bitten by a mosquito, but I really don't want to be getting exposing myself or my child to DEET either. So there's a couple different approaches that we can take. Um, you know, certainly if a person feels that DEET is the right thing for them, putting it on their clothing as opposed to straight onto their skin. If they're wearing, you know, wear a hat and put it on the hat. And there are natural products like Sawyer Fisher formula on the market. Consumer reports giving it high marks for its effectiveness. The applications have to happen more frequently than DEET. Its key ingredient, picaridin. It's said to be safe for pregnant women and children as young as six months old. A vector control had trucks spraying in Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead tonight. They say insecticides they use have been labeled for use in residential areas and are found to be non-toxic to humans and pets. A relief, certainly. Mm -hmm. There are fewer Americans with Down syndrome than previously thought. Researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital used a larger and more accurate database to track down syndrome rates over the past 60 years. They found about 206,000 people had the condition in 2010, which is far less than other estimates. Experts say new surgeries have increased the life expectancy of Down syndrome patients, and it's no longer just a childhood disability. Later in sports, what are the Bisons saying will be their best defense against Eastern Washington this week? Alex Egan is in with the answer. Up next, what happened today within Wells Fargo that led to the firing of 3,500 employees?